Hello everybody and welcome to part 3 in your advanced sprite sheet animation uh, tutorials series. So right now in our animation class we've gotten to actually initializing everything, everything that we need in our program. So, sorry, so we can, so we get our, fra we got our frame width, we can get our frame height, we have our position stored, our amount of frames stored, um, and we have our sprite image stored. So now let's go to our actual update. Now, actually, before we get to our update, there's one more variable we have to include in our animation class, and that is active. And we're going to be making a uh, get, or actually, we need to make get and set properties for active. So we're going to do get active and bool set active. So it's always good programming practice to have get and set uh, properties. So uh, the reason why we do this is because of encapsulation. And what encapsulation is, is to hide certain variables like active and stuff to make them private. And then we have get or set methods in order to see if we can modify the values. So say we're sharing our code with somebody else right with another fellow programmer but he doesn't know exactly how the code works if the programmer doesn't see the get or any set methods for it that means he knows not to interfere with that method with that variable outside of that class because if that variable is meant to be interfered with outside of that class then there will be get and set methods for or get and set functions for it if there's no get and set functions then that means you shouldn't interfere with it outside of the class okay so uh, first of all we need to make these public because we're going to be interfering with these outside the class for these get and set method these are only protected so that means unless they're inheriting from the animation class these can't use the for they can't use these properties right here so even if we inherited from the animation class, I don't think you would actually need to utilize this, but we'll just keep it in protected just for now. Uh, so we have our. Sorry. So that means my video is uploaded. Anyway, so we have our active variable, and we're going to set active equals to false at first. And for our get and set. Um, function so we can do get active sorry animation get active and bool animation set active so if you notice a lot of people say that like C sharp and Java are easier to program in or better because they require less um, lines of code well, since C++ is a lower level language, then you require to do more. And not in this sense. In this sense, it's just because of the way C Sharp's C++ syntax is. With Java, with Java, it would generally be around the same way. But you can sort of see why some people creep towards C Sharp or Java in a certain sense. If that makes sense to anybody. If it doesn't, then forget about that. But I just get often asked uh, which one is better, why, which one's easier, etc., etc. Anyways, so for our get active, we want to return active, and for our set active, we should have a value in there. So active will be equal to value. Sorry, boolean. So active equals to value. And since we have to accommodate for animation dot h and dot cpp, it makes the code a bit longer rather than Java and C sharp. So that's why it's a bit longer. But I still prefer C plus plus because it is the industry standard. So even if you guys get tired of switching from dot h to dot cpp, you guys better get used to it, especially if you want to make amazing games. So we got our set active and our get active. So right now, we're going to say that if active, then frame counter 
plus equals uh, we're gonna cast this to an int and we're gonna do window dot get frame time and we're gonna, if we're gonna do an else frame counters equal to zero so now we so what this is gonna do is that we're gonna add uh we're gonna add to frame counter at a uniform rate depending on the refresh rate of the window so now we have to say that if frame counter is greater to or equal to switch frame then we actually have to switch the frame that we're actually in so what we're gonna do is reset frame counter back to zero so we're gonna say that if um no sorry so we're gonna do current frame x plus equals frame width or oh, sorry get frame width so what's it gonna do if our frame width is 32 is th yeah is 32 pixels wide so it's gonna do current frame plus 32 so now we have to say if current frame X is equal greater than or equal to sprite image dot get image dot get width then we need to set current frame x equal to zero. Now, uh, one thing to note is that some sprite sheets will do the walking animation. They won't do it horizontally. The walking animation may be vertical. And this will be very easy to manipulate to change. Um, so say you have us, uh, say you have an en some enemy images are they move horizontally like the animation images flow horizontally but some flow vertically well you can always add in a variable called orientation uh, you could you can name it whatever you want but I like to name it orientation or axis so say the axis is equal to 1 so I'll say like if axis is equal to 1 then it's you scroll horizontally along the x-axis and if axis is set to two, then you scroll vertically against the y axis. So then, if so, you could always do if axis is equal to one, then you add to current frame x. But if axis is equal to two, then you add to current frame y. And that's for more advanced things. I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just working with one basic sprite sheet for now. So, um, we got that. We set we set all of that stuff right there so now we actually have to um crop out our image so we can actually indeed draw our image so we're, now we're going to do sprite image dot set sub ret and this is what this is going to do is actually allow us to crop out our image so sf interact and so what we're going to do here is that we're going to take our current frame x and current frame y times frame height and I'm going to explain to you what this is doing sorry get frame height and then it's going to be current frame x plus get frame width and current frame y plus get f frame height so what this is going to do is going to say start drawing from this pixel right here and then end drawing from these pixels right there. So why did I do current frame y times get frame height? Well the reason why I did this is because this is how we're going to be doing our drawing order. Before I made the finds that was at 0, 48, 96 and 144 well that's cool and all but say you have a sprite sheet that um, has like 24 different animations okay and to actually make the fines for 24 animations can be annoying or stressful or whatever and memorizing what the starting value will be to actually input in your program can be a bit hectic so this is what we're gonna do down value the current frame y for down is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. 
So if current frame y is equal to 0, that means that we're moving down. If current frame y is equal to 1, it means we're moving left. If current frame is equal to 2, it means we're moving right. And if current frame is equal to 3, it means we're moving up. So let's look at it this way. If current frame y is equal to 0, what's 0 times 48? That is equal to 0. So we'll also start drawing from this corner over here, which means we're going to be doing this cycle over here. So now, uh, what if we're pressing the right button? So 0, 1, 2. So if current frame y is equal to 2, what's 2 times 48? 96. So we'll also start drawing from this section over here. And it makes it easier without having to memorize um, the values because this will do it for you. The compiler will do all the calculations for you. And lastly, but not least, for drawing, we just have to put window dot draw and draw our sprite image. So we could also set our position. So sprite image dot set position equal to x and y. So we also want to make get and set properties for um, our current frame and our position so then our player class can manipulate it and I'll sh I will create those right now and then we'll exp I'll explain the reason for this in our next tutorial so now we're gonna need to get our get our current frame and we're just gonna put uh, axis and we're gonna put set current frame. I'm gonna put in axis in value. And for position, it's gonna be the same thing. And get position in axis and set position in axis in value. So if we go to our animation.cpp, we'll go up here. We'll put bool animation and get current frame in axis. So if axis is equal to one, so we're on the horizontal axis, then we're going to return current frame x, else return current frame y and then for the setting animation sorry set current frame and axis and value we're basically going to do the same thing so if axis is equal to 1 then current frame x is equal to value else current frame y is equal to value and uh, we're gonna do the same thing for position so quickly we're gonna do bull bull animation get position and axis and if axis is equal to 1 then return pos return x else return sorry return y and lastly but not least animation set position int axis int value and we're going to say if axis is equal to 1 then x is equal to value else y is equal to value and that is it for this part of the tutorial thanks for watching and I'll explain more about it in the next tutorial so bye